Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making the best, and I can say that with confidence, the best chicken pot pies you will ever have in your life. And you don't have to share with anyone because they're individual and they're big. So uh, you're going to want to stay tuned. Now, before you get started, I would like you to push that notification button. Click it. Become a subscriber. You will not be sorry because I don't want you to miss any of my tips or videos. I've been teaching for many, many years and I love when you come into my kitchen and I can share everything that I know how to make with you. And sometimes you, 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 know, you, 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 you reach out to me and I learn so much from you. So please join me uh, in becoming a subscriber. All right, are you ready for the best chicken pot pie ever. So first thing we have to do is start with a flaky pie crust. And yes, you can always buy one, but there's nothing like homemade. I love to make mine in a food processor. Uh, in my food processor, I have two cups of all-purpose flour. I have one quarter teaspoon of baking powder, just to give it a little puff, not too much, just a little bit. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to pulse that a little bit. Just pulse, pulse, pulse. Not a big deal. This is a cream cheese crust. If you don't like cream cheese or you can't eat cream cheese, you can also substitute an equal amount of uh, butter. So this is half a cup of cubed cream cheese. And don't get, you know, the fat-free, get real cream cheese. And I'm going to grab a spoon because I need a little help getting this out. This is nice and cold. And I'm going to put this in with my butter, salt, and baking powder. And we're going to just pulse it a little bit until it gets to be about pea-sized pieces. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Just like, I don't know, 8 to 10 to 12 pulses, depending on how strong your food processor is. All right? And now I'm going to add one and a half sticks unsalted butter cubed. And this is ice cold. And that's why it's so much easier to make it in a food processor because it's so ice cold. If you did use the pastry blender, it would actually be really hard. And I have done it with pastry blender. And if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. We're going to pulse it again. This time you want, again, pea-sized pieces like the garden peas. If a few pieces are a little bit bigger, that's okay too. All right. Now, we're going to add about two to three tablespoons of ice water. That's the first thing I do when I make a flaky pie crust. I get my ice water ready. This is the key to keeping the fat in your flaky pie crust ice cold. So when it goes in the oven, it's gonna take a while to melt, and when it melts, it's gonna leave a space, and that space is gonna fill up with steam, and that steam is gonna help that beautiful pastry rise and separate into layers. You will not be disappointed. All right, let's start with two tablespoons. Just drizzle it in there. And then my secret ingredient, it's really my secret ingredient, some form of acid, all right? I use apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna put in a tablespoon. This acid will help make our dough what's known as extensible to us bakers. So it makes it a lot easier to roll out and it won't sort of pull back like a rubber band and you'll basically denature some of the proteins in the wheat flour, making it easier to, to form the crust. So we're gonna pulse it. If we see that the dough does not come together very well, we want it not to be that wet, but we also don't wanna to add too much water because water and wheat flour form gluten. Gluten can cause toughness. So I can see, see it's sort of, it's very crumbly. So let's add some more water. Now, you may have to add a tablespoon, another tablespoon. So this is three. I'm going to add four, total of four, because I can see it's very crumbly. So use your judgment. You're going to want to use your best tools. Those are your hands. And make sure that it comes together. You don't want it to pull together into an actual dough, but you can see we're forming big, 
Nice big clumps. Okay, so let's feel it again. You see this? This is nice. See it how it holds together? That is nice. That is a dough that I can be proud of. So now what I like to do is, I, and you've seen me do this numerous times for pies, uh, for any type of pie dough uh, or short, you know, like a short crust, I pour it into a bowl because it's easier to bring it together. All right. So I'm going to not, I'm not kneading. I'm just gathering. You're just going to gather. And this gives me an opportunity to feel the dough again so that if I want to add a little more water, I can. But you can see, feel like you're almost like mopping up the bottom of the bowl with like an imaginary sponge and it's coming together and forming this beautiful, beautiful crust. And you should see little chunks of butter and you should see little chunks of cream cheese. That's the secret to flakiness, all right? So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna get some plastic wrap and I am gonna wrap this dough because we've been sorta beating it up a little bit, we're gonna give it a rest, okay? And I got a lot of dough here. So we're gonna give it a rest in the fridge. You can even make this several days in advance. Let's say you don't want the best chicken pot pie right now. You can actually make this ahead, date it, label it, and freeze it, or leave it even in your fridge for four or five days. So I'm just gonna push, bring it all together into a disc, and give it a little rest for probably about 30 minutes to an hour, uh, or even longer if you want. I'll see you back. I want to tell you how I made my filling for the best, best chicken pot pie ever. So I took three pounds of chicken. I took thighs, I took chicken legs. Um, the chicken legs had the skin on, the thighs were boneless and skinless. You can do whatever combination you want, but about three pounds for about four large chicken pot pies. Now, if you want to make eight, um, you can make eight, but they'd be a little smaller, okay? So what I did was I took my chicken. First, I took a big pot, uh, put a little oil in, and sauteed some carrots, uh, one cup of carrots, one cup of chopped onions, uh, a few garlic cloves that I minced, sauteed them till they got nice and brown, and then I added my chicken pieces, uh, and then I added about... I'm going to make sure it was about five and a half cups of chicken broth. Mine was salt free. If you want to use any chicken broth you want, if it's homemade, not homemade, it doesn't matter. Uh, add it and cook everything for about 40, 45 minutes until the chicken is completely cooked through. Then I separated and I have my broth here. Um, I had my vegetables, which I took out. And then I chopped up my chicken and deboned it. And now I'm going to take the vegetables and put them in here with the chicken so you have a huge bowl and then I took a cup of chopped fro I'm, I'm sorry a cup of peas frozen peas that are thawed so just a cup if you like more peas you can add more and then I have one cup of blanched one inch piece green beans or arico vert you can find them in the grocery store any green beans even frozen um, if they're not frozen, if they're fresh, you want to blanch them in boiling water for about two minutes and then shock them in ice water, and then you got them. Uh, you can even make those a few days in advance. Then I took one cup of butternut squash. I chopped it into little cubes, put it on an oiled sheet pan, put a little like salt, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever you like to put on there, put it in about 425 degree oven, for about 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna put that in there. Now, if you don't like this vegetable combination, this is not set in stone. You can do mushrooms, you can do whatever your family likes. You can even use frozen vegetables, whatever. But if you really want the best chicken pot pie, use mostly fresh. I know I did use the peas just to give a little color, um, but this is all my vegetables and my chicken. So what I'm going to eventually do is put those in my crock pots 
or this is about five and a half inch wide souples that are oven proof. They must be oven proof. And you're gonna divide them up. And like I said, you can get four big ones for this recipe. You can also probably make about eight smaller if you have ramekins that are a little smaller. And then we're going to make uh, a beautiful brown sauce, like a chicken gravy that we're gonna put over our meat and then we're gonna roll out our pastry. So let's come over to our pot. We're gonna make a roux, four tablespoons of butter. All right. Remember, a roux is equal parts of fat and flour. So this is four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And then I'm going to, once that melts, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna cook that till I get the starchiness out. Now I also like to put one teaspoon of garlic powder in there and I'm gonna add that to my flour and one teaspoon of uh, garlic and onion powder. So one of each, teaspoon of each. If you don't wanna do that step, you don't have to. And then about a teaspoon of kosher salt, I'm gonna put that right in there with my flour. Once my butter's melted, I'm going to start my roux by adding all my flour. And then we can adjust the flour if we feel like we need more later on. So once this comes to like, you know, a little bubbly on the bottom and you can see that the starchiness of the flour is cooked out, you only want to cook it for like 30 seconds to a minute just to get the starchiness out. You don't want to burn it. And if you feel like you need a little more uh, butter in there, you can put another tablespoon, but I think this is fine. And once this is ready to go, we're gonna add the broth that we cooked our chicken in. I'm gonna add a little at a time. All right, a little at a time. Oop. And it may have this beautiful, beautiful fattiness from your meat. So you're gonna add it a little at a time. Add the whole thing. Remember, you started out with five and a half cups, five and a half cups, and just get all those lumps out. It should come out. If I was an octopus, I would not have any problems because I could hold the pot and just go in every direction and cook all that beautiful sauce. You can see it thickening beautifully. I'm gonna add the rest of it now. And then you're going to reduce it a little bit while we're rolling out our, our pastry. So we're going to let that go. We're going to put that up the temperature to almost a boil. And you're just going to reduce this for a little bit. So we are going to watch this closely. It should thicken up. And then we are going to ladle it into our crock pots or our ramekins over our chicken and vegetables. So now it's time to roll out our pastry. So my beautiful sauce or gravy, it came out beautiful. I let it cook down a little bit, so maybe 10, 15 minutes. Now if it is too thin and you feel it's not thick enough, you can always thicken it up. So what you do is you take some flour, put it in some cold water, and make what's known as a slurry. Very common thing to do to thicken a sauce. And while it's boiling, gentle boil, you add this slurry. It should almost be like the consistency of heavy cream, your slurry. And you drizzle it in and whisk so you get no lumps and your sauce should thicken, but it will not reach its full thickening power unless the sauce is boiling. So when I find that I don't have enough thickening. Maybe you added a little more chicken stock. Maybe it didn't reduce a, a lot and it, there was more volume and you do need to thicken it. Very common. Do a slurry. Okay? So we're ready to roll out our dough. I'm going to make a real nice floured surface on my work area. Okay. And this is a really good amount of pie crust. I don't like to be scumpy, skimpy for my pies or my chicken pot pies. I love a lot of crust. And what I did was I took a bowl or any type of a cookie cutter about the same width. This is a big, big crock. And this is about the same, a little bit bigger. 
because I want the crust to hang over. You don't want it to fit inside. We're making the best chicken pot pies, okay? So I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to roll it in my flour. And then it's been chilling. And I'm just going to roll it out. And you're going to try to make four of these. Oh, and you're going to work your abs too, which is good because this is a big, rich chicken pot pie. So you may have to burn a few calories, but you know what? Oh my gosh, it's so worth it. This is so worth it. So don't be skimpy on the flour. Rotate, always rotate. Don't let it stick. I also have an egg in a cup for an egg wash. So we're going to egg wash not only the sides of our crock pots, but we're going to egg wash the top so the crust gets nice and brown because yolks brown. Yolks cause a lot of browning, which is what we want. I also have a pastry brush to knock off the excess flour. And I am going to make four massive, massive chicken pot pies. If you want to double this, just use, you know, obviously smaller uh, crock pots uh, or ramekins. I am not going to give you specific um, numbers of uh, or measurements because you can do literally whatever you want. So let's see what we're going here. I want this to be a little bit more rolled out. And you don't want it too thin because you want to see a nice crust. I don't know about you, but I love the crust. Some people don't like pie crust and they don't like, you know, this crust or that crust. I like the crust. I want crust, okay? I'm not lying. I like crust. So we're going to get maybe, maybe we'll get two out of here. I'm going to try to do two, and then we'll have to roll out another one. All right, so I have my little knife. I'm going to go around. Go all the way around. You can use a cookie cutter if that's the size of your ramekin. Remember, you want it a little bigger. All right, let's see if we can get another one. Yeah, we can eke out another one. Let me, let me roll slightly. Just a little bit more. There we go. And eke out two. And then I'll only need to do two more. Oh boy. You can almost share one of mine with another person if you wanted to, but nah. I want one all to myself. I cannot lie. I want one all to myself. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna re-roll it. I'm going to take this very gently, okay? And before we set it on here, we're going to take our egg wash, and then we have to fill our beautiful, let me get this out of your way so you can see. I'm going to put this on here. And I have a ladle because we're going to put our sauce on after. So I'm just going to do a little bit of egg wash on here on the inside because I want the press to stick to the ramekin or the crock pot. Oh, I have preheated my oven, by the way. That's the most important thing. To 375, and we're going to bake these for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, maybe even up to 40 minutes, so that everything is golden brown. And you want to see the chicken filling bubbling through the holes, because we're going to make holes. All right. So let's set one up. Oh, my big filling. So I tossed all my filling, right? So you're going to divvy up the filling between these beautiful, beautiful crock pots. I have had these for years, and I love them. I love them. So we're going to make big ones. I may even have some leftovers, but I like them big. So fill them, and then you're going to put sauce over them to your liking. And then, remember, everything in here is already cooked. That's the most important thing. You want to make sure everything is already cooked, your filling. So if you decide to change some stuff and do beef 
or yeah, it's got to be it's got to be cooked. Like you could do a beef stew filling. Make sure your beef is all cooked. Nothing is raw. It just really needs the crust to get done. So I'm going to add I'm going to add them all the way to the top. Oh yeah. We got a big big hungry family here. Big hungry family. So I'm just going to Finish this up. Oh boy, you must think we are gluttons. Gluttons in my family. Well, maybe we are, but it's okay, because these are the best. They really are the best. Once I made these, I never went back. I never went back. So now I'm gonna get my sauce. And make sure you taste your sauce and it's to your liking. If you want to adjust the salt, you can. I'm going to use a ladle. All right, and I'm going to ladle some great, beautiful gravy. See how it coats that ladle? That's what you want. That's what I'm talking about. So ladle as much as you want in here. Get that chicken in there. Okay, mmm, delicious. And if you wanted to save it, you could save your gravy and make more the next day if you wanted to. Nah, why bother? Make them all now. And you can even reheat them. Or you could actually make them up to this point and make your dough another day. So chill these off and make your dough another day. And then just top them and bake them. They're best when they're completely fresh. I'm going to add a little more sauce to that. Oh my gosh, and they smell so good. If you could smell um, the video and have like a smell a video, that's not a good word. You would go nuts over this. It smells so good. All right, so I think we're good. I'm gonna move this out of the way again so you can see my top crust. Now you always want to make a slit or some sort of a hole in here you want to let the steam come out. So I'm going to make a pattern, or you can take a cookie cutter, do whatever you want, all right? Or if it's a special, special time of year or birthday, you can do someone's name in here, whatever you want. So I am going to just do it around here. I'm going to show you only a few. You want it to stick. That's the glue. And you're going to stick it right on top. And then just push down. Push down. Oh my gosh, if I got this, if I got this at someone's house, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever leave. <laughs> They'd have to supply me with chicken pot pies forever. And if you want your holes a little bigger, just go in there. Go big or go home, okay? And then egg wash again. If you wanted to coat this with a little sea salt, you could. Uh, or if you wanted to do a little coarse ground pepper, you could, whatever you want to do. 35 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes until they get golden brown. And you see that chicken gravy bubbling through those little holes, you're done. You take them out of the oven and you serve them pronto. Chicken pot pie waits for no man. So my beautiful chicken pot pies just came out of the oven. They are piping hot. And I want to cut into one to show you. So I'm going to give it a, you hear it? Listen to the crust. You hear that? Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, steamy and beautiful and chickeny and delicious. I think it's a little too hot for me to bite into. But this one is mine. I hope you become a subscriber, and I hope you make these best chicken pot pies. Till next time.